and welcome to the online service of First Presbyterian Church in Alexander City, Alabama. I'm sitting in the playground behind the church, and I was going to sit in one of these lovely swings, but it does this number, and it's not very comfortable. So I'm sitting in a chair. I want to say I miss all our members and friends, and Buzz and I particularly are so thankful for the notes and cards you've sent us upon his son's passing. We hope you enjoy today's service. This is a beautiful place. How long have you lived down here? We've lived here 43 years. But what you don't have is uh, all the boats coming through here. No. 50 miles an hour and no. making the waves come all over the place. Just no. jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> How has uh, life changed since the last few months since we've had uh, all this cultural change and isolation. Well, for me, I've missed being at church with all of our church family and uh, getting out and going to stores and shopping. I've missed that, but the rest of the time we've been busy taking care of grandchildren. <laughs> well, you know as a hugger, I am missing all my favorites. Oh, very much, and I, I've, when I'm up there, when uh, Kay is recording me doing the hymns, I still can look out and see where everybody sits. For 46 years, I knew where people sit, and I missed them when they're not there on Sunday mornings. So I, I miss that. I miss the congregation singing and seeing, seeing all the people I love. And I had two things to happen. During this quarantine, I turned 70 years old. And Kay and I had a little party by ourselves. And then we had our 49th wedding anniversary. And we had a little party by ourselves. And uh, they both were wonderful. Both of us have worked, worked, worked. And uh, this is the most time we've ever been together in 49 years. And it's, it's been wonderful.
The scripture reading today is from Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and saw their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his kinfolk. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting, and he said to the one who was in the wrong, Why do you strike your fellow Hebrew? He answered, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up and came to their defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come back so soon today? They said, An Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien residing in, the, in a foreign land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In ancient Egypt, children of the royal families, nobles and bureaucrats and Moses, started to school at the age of four. They went every day for years and years until they were adults. Curriculum was reading, writing, and arithmetic with special emphasis on the skill and art of writing. In this scripture, Moses has graduated with uh, such skill from Egyptian schools, and now he is in God's school. I see applications for us in this story, and for the next two or three weeks, uh, what lessons do I learn in God's school? I want to share those with you. Bible stories about people are not simply biographies. The purpose of them is to show you God's identity, how he works with people in their lives, how he enrolls them in his school and puts them in classes to teach them lessons. Now in this story, Moses on his own tries to bring justice and deliverance to his people. He fumbles. He murders an abusive Egyptian. And he hides the body. He sees an Egyptian striking down, the Hebrew says, striking down a Hebrew. The Egyptian is probably a slave master, and the Hebrew a slave, defenseless. The Hebrew language says Moses struck down the Egyptian, maybe not intending to kill him, but he did. The Bible says Moses went out to his brothers, on the surface, it appears that Moses left the palace for a day trip to go see how the slaves were being treated or to ob observe their affliction. But the Hebrew language here says he went out to be alongside his kin, to work with them, to see their plight. Moses had a motive and it was to go out to be with his brothers alongside them. He rejected the luxury, treasure, leisure, and pleasures of royalty to be alongside his suffering people. 
and such men are rare. Example, Vladimir Lenin, like most socialists, believe in high-minded principles about how the upper class mistreats the lower working classes, but Lenin did not care about them. He only cared about power and control. He thought that he was a defender of the poor worker, the disadvantaged, and Lenin, Lenin never went to a factory. He never went to a food bank or a slum or a soup kitchen or a farm. He was never seen anywhere near the working class areas of any town where he ever lived. He was a politician. He was an academician. He was never found alongside his brothers to see how they were being afflicted. His whole life was spent among the intelligentsia, the bourgeois. Do you understand? Lenin was no Jesus. In the book of Hebrews, it says, Jesus had to be made like his brothers in every way so that he might become a merciful, faithful high priest for them in God's service. Since he himself suffered when he was tempted, he can help those who are being tempted. Lenin was no Jesus. Lenin was no Moses who went out alongside his brothers. So my lesson is to discover my own inner motives. And I see Lenin would never say, these are my people. He could not say that. Lenin could never say, and would never say, these are the people to whom I belong. He couldn't do that. Well, what about me? And you? Do I know what it's like to be a Christian brother or sister who's poor in this country and in the world, or persecuted in one of the over 50 countries where it's dangerous? to be a follower of Christ? Well, I could talk now about the ways we could walk away from the palace and our treasures and be alongside our kinfolk, brothers and sisters in Christ who struggle and suffer. But the lesson is more pointed. It's about inner motive. It's about a question. Bruce, do you, like Moses, in your inner motive, find that you're driven to seek justice and deliverance for God's own people, your own people? And that's the lesson from God's school to this pupil. May we pray. Gracious Lord, help me to at least be driven by my inner motive of compassion and to be alongside of my brothers and sisters who suffer. At least let me raise up intercessory prayer and beg for the, for the people who go through these plights of danger or hopelessness. And if it be your will, let me be a Jesus. Let me be a Moses. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's service. We'd like to remind our members and friends if you want to send in your pledges or your donations, please do so to P.O. Box 96. The zip code is 35011. Thank you.